Hello and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. I'd like to begin today's video by reading an email that I got uh, from a viewer. Um, a couple episodes ago, I did a video on the famous Pennsylvania Dutchman Milton S. Hershey, and one of the comments I made in my video was that I didn't know if, for sure if he still spoke Pennsylvania Dutch or not. So in, in regards to that, I got an email from a Lenore Holt, uh, and I'd just like to read real quick what she wrote. I just listened to your video on Milton Hershey, and you said that you weren't certain if Mr. Hershey continued to speak Pennsylvania Dutch throughout his life. My father worked in the Hershey Research Lab for close to 30 years, from the late 60s into the 90s, and during that time heard a few stories about the days when Mr. Hershey headed up his company. Dad told one story of an employee who disagreed with Mr. Hershey on a certain procedure and continued to tell him why the current way of doing things was wrong. In sensing his employer, who then shouted at him in Pennsylvania Dutch to get out. So, given that, and thanks to Lenore, um, I guess Milton Hershey did speak Pennsylvania Dutch. So I, th I thought that was really a neat little bit of history. Um, so thanks, Lenore. I really appreciate it. Uh, today's topic is I got another I got another viewer request about well, how do the Pennsylvania Dutch celebrate Halloween? Um, and that got me thinking about fall holidays as a whole, because the Pennsylvania Dutch celebrate uh, some things in the fall that are not celebrated by the average American. Um, so I reached out to some of my friends that are uh, you know, experts in the field, and I have to thank uh, two people in particular uh, for getting back to me, Keith Brinsenhoff from Kutztown and Patrick Dunmoyer, also from Kutztown, who runs the Pennsylvania Cultural Heritage Center uh, at Kutztown University. Um, I mean, I knew what my family and what my community did around the fall, but I reached out to them if they had heard anything or knew of things that maybe traditions that I wasn't aware of. And they pretty much agreed with most of the things that I had to say, um, but they added a couple anecdotes of their own uh, and from stories that they had heard. So I want to talk a little bit about what the Pennsylvania Dutch do to celebrate in the fall. And we'll start with Halloween right off the bat. You know, the notion of Halloween as we know it today, uh, where kids trick-or-treat, dress up, and costumes, that's pretty much a foreign concept um, to the Pennsylvania Dutch. According to Patrick, he said that, you know, up until the 1940s and 50s is when you really start to see um, images of Pennsylvania Dutch schoolhouse kids getting dressed up. Um, a lot of those early costumes were, of course, homemade, uh, sometimes made out of flour sacks, uh, you know, thinking about this is the, you know, on the farm, life on the farm. Um, prior to that, the area, the time around, you know, Halloween was more of a time for, for mischief among the Pennsylvania Dutch, uh, pulling pranks on other people. There are uh, stories in history of people that would go around and, and steal outhouses or take the meats from your smokehouse and hang them in the neighbor's tree. Um, you know, what we would consider more like mean and malicious stuff. So it was more, much more of a, of a night of mischief. Uh, being done by young Pennsylvania Dutch, uh, maybe teenagers, late teens and so forth, but not the idea of candy and costumes. That really didn't come until, you know, probably well into the 50s and 60s and then up until today. Um, but then we're left with what other major, you know, things do we celebrate here in the United States in the fall? And that, of course, is Thanksgiving. Um, and how that equates to the Pennsylvania Dutch is also quite different. Um the Pennsylvania Dutch originally didn't celebrate Thanksgiving. We have to remember that Thanksgiving, as we know it in, in November, is a tradition that was brought from New England. President Lincoln made it an official proclamation in 1863 or 1864 that the third or fourth Thursday in, th in November would be a day of Thanksgiving. But the Pennsylvania Dutch had celebrated something similar to that, but much earlier, um, and that would, would become what was known as the Harvest Home Celebration. And Harvest Home Celebration was usually celebrated in September uh, when the harvest was being brought in at the end of the harvest. We have to think, by, by the late November... Pennsylvania Dutch farms, they're done. You know, they're done for the winter. They have everything stored. Everything's been brought in. Um, so it, to most of the Pennsylvania Dutch families, when this was first brought about, you know, and, and brought to, you know, made a, an American thing, they scoffed at it because it didn't make sense to them. It was too late in the year where the Pennsylvania Dutch had always been celebrating this idea of harvest home. Um, it was mainly celebrated in churches as well, and in September, um, and like I said, that was our harvest celebration, our time to give thanks. A lot of the rural churches, and still today in Pennsylvania Dutch country, you'll see this, whatever Sunday is Harvest Home Sunday, um, people will bring in uh, 
stuff from the gardens and from their fields and they would decorate the altar of the church and usually then after the church service whatever was collected would be donated to needy families um, in the community. Uh, Patrick told me that some of the churches uh, in that you know in Pennsylvania Dutch country used to have kind of this unspoken contest where farmers would try to bring in the biggest piece of of produce the biggest pumpkin or something like that um, just to you know kind of show it off um, but even for myself growing up in the 80s and 90s my small Lutheran church in Mulltown right outside of Fleetwood we had a harvest home celebration every Sunday uh, every every year in September excuse me and the al the altar would be decorated with canned goods or f or produce brought in from the from the farms you know not everyone was farming anymore by the 90s but uh, they would replace instead of fresh produce they'd bring in canned goods that would then get uh, taken to uh, needy families or um, food food pantries um, in the local area so that's a that's a tradition that that the Pennsylvania Dutch have that's a little different from Thanksgiving of course eventually we adopted the um, traditional American Thanksgiving of course using our our own food um, at those celebrations but at first it was really met with a lot of um, pushback from the Pennsylvania Dutch in the 1860s uh, I hear I have two pictures of rural churches in Pennsylvania Dutch country uh, at a typical harvest home Sunday. Uh, and as you can see, the altars are beautifully decorated with all of the various produce and, and goods, food, food items brought in from the local farmers. There are two other really important holidays from the average Pennsylvania Dutch family in the fall. Maybe not as much anymore today as it used to be. But since Pennsylvania Dutch country among us, the church Dutch, um, we're all Protestant, mainly Lutheran or Reformed. Reformation Sunday was always a very important day, of course, marking the, re the beginning of the Reformation and celebrating what Martin Luther did, the foundation of our faith. Um, this year, of course, 2017 is going to be a really important Reformation Day Sunday because it marks the 500th anniversary in 1517 when Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. Start officially starting the Protestant Reformation. And also uh, All Saints Day, which is typically the first Sunday after Reformation Day, is another very important church holiday that was celebrated by the Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, it was a Sunday where you remembered all of the people that we lost in that year uh, during the church service. At some point the names would be read and sometimes the bell would be rung for each name. Or maybe something was a bell, a bell sound was played on the organ. This, of course, still goes on in a lot of rural Pennsylvania Dutch Protestant churches. And it's a very important day in the church year, but it was also an important day for the Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, so there's just a a brief overview of about you know of our fall holidays. Um, so again, Halloween, you know, as we know it today, is a relatively newer invention to the Pennsylvania Dutch. Before that, it was just a night to get into trouble or at least go out and cause some trouble. But Harvest Home is a really important uh, holiday. I think that's pretty unique to us. I don't know if other cultures outside of the Pennsylvania Dutch celebrated something like that. Of course, New England bringing the Thanksgiving uh, idea uh, and making it a national thing in the 1860s changed, uh, but it didn't devalue Harvest Home among the Pennsylvania Dutch. We just added another holiday, I guess you could say, by celebrating Thanksgiving at home at home. Um, and then the Reformation Day, Reformation Sunday, and um, All Saints Day. So a brief overview of some fall holidays celebrated by the Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, one other thing, you know, in the fall, some of the things that uh, most Americans associate with fall, the Pennsylvania Dutch also associate with, like apple cider, fresh apple cider, um, pumpkins, the Pennsylvania Dutch do make pumpkin pie and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, we're not completely different from the mainstream American culture, I guess you could say, but we do have our own uh, take on it. Um, and uh, maybe I'll do something like this, of course, for winter holidays coming up as well, if somebody would like to see a video on that. But uh, for now, thanks for that. It was a great question. It really got me thinking about beyond just Halloween. Um, I hadn't really thought about the, you know, we always celebrated Harvest Home, and those were important uh, days, Reformation Day and All Saints Day in in my family and in my church family. So it was, it was good to think about that and say, oh, yeah, I need to talk about that too. Um, but if you have an idea for a future video, please feel free to email me, the email address at the end. If you know someone that would enjoy seeing these videos, uh, please tell them to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you'll get an email update every time a new video is posted. So until next time, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, 
And if you have comments about anything I ever say, please feel free to email me and I'll give you a shout out in a future video as well. Just like Lenore gave me that great tidbit about Milton Hershey. I was really happy to read that and hopefully you enjoyed that bit too. All right, till next time, Mox Good. Mm -hmm.